Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rathead salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course, sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. Ah, oh, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Hedgehog goulash. Street turnips in homemade juice. And it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Oh, well, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes! Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes, it's my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. Well, and forget about the dinner. Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. You'll be there, right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Holmes, poor little Wiggins needs our help. Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, Constable... Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Aberline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. With this one, we've got the murderer, the weapon, and the statements, which speak for themselves. Of course, Marrow. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. Who were the victims? The two men here, both shot. The stab fellow was Brian Facotti, a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler, a jeweler by trade. Uh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer Chapman. Mr. Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there and Polly Powell, a flower seller, who was over at the far side of the street. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after, the fireworks started. A few minutes after that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but suddenly I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. I rushed over there and I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman, 
He'd been caught by two police constables. Did you hear the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud I couldn't hear anything else. What were the fireworks in honor of, uh, Constable? Well, uh, today's Queen Victoria's birthday, Mr. Holmes. Ah, uh, yes, I appear to have lost track of the days. It is May now, of course. Uh, Constable Marrow, what else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Yes, I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. A fairly long pole with a forked end. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death was not instant. The bullet penetrated his stomach, a dreadful wound. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vicotti must have done some time there. Brian Vicotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. The bullet struck his head. This man didn't stand a chance. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. A piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. Let us take a closer look. Hmm. This shard of wood is quite new. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Oh, I, I heard Constable Varrow reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I've heard of you. Uh, and well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might we hear your story? Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. Uh, I quickly got up and I grabbed the lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man. The murderer. The fellow they caught. Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. Mr. Turner, 
What were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return. So I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great deal, Mr. Turner. Mrs. Powell? What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began, in honor of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost, and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him, because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street, and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, oh well... I think Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. You understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago.
The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims. The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Well now. What a find! A precious jewel, concealed inside a book. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something, or someone, in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, 
does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. Mr. Holmes, whatever brings you here so late at night? I am interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco, nothing interesting. A cheap watch, bought with his own money, no doubt. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. It seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I I'll tell you everything. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. 
I left my work and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. And then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray continue. I turned a corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Leighton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm, and what about that? Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? And you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. <laughs>